Welcome back, everyone, the, to our small modular reactor panel. Um, I would like to introduce Sophie McFarland Smith at Rolls Royce SMR, Friedrich Wiederbach at GE Hitachi, um, Hans Schoenmakers, I'm sorry for my very bad Dutch pronunciation, at, at Last Energy, Last Energy, and Louis Plowden Wardlaw at Terrestrial Energy. Um, take it away. <laughs> okay. Can can everyone hear me? Okay. Sorry. Closer. Right. Can you hear me? Okay. Now. Usually, uh, it's not a problem with hearing me. Uh, I've got what they call the graveyard shift in the UK, straight after lunch, where everyone wants to snooze. <laughs> but no, you're going to hear about nuclear power stations. So, um, so I'm uh, Sophie McFarlane smith uh, Head of Customer Engagement for Rolls-Royce SMR. I'm, I know I've only got eight minutes, so I'm going to whiz through this very quickly and only make a few points, if that's okay. So first of all, who were Rolls-Royce SMR? Um, uh, we are a newly formed company um, uh, with four shareholders. Um, primarily among those, uh, Rolls-Royce Group, who is the majority shareholder. You may wonder why Rolls-Royce are involved in a, a nuclear reactor program or a nuclear power station program. Two reasons. Uh, one, we've been manufacturing complex equipment for over 100 years, so we understand manufacturing. And two, for around 60 of those years, we've been manufacturing small nuclear power stations, small nuclear plants. Uh, now, in the UK, that's for the submarines program, um, but we understand how you manufacture and how you operate and how you design design small nuclear plants. Um, the other shareholder that I just want to mention is Constellation Energy. So Constellation Energy are uh, previously known as Exelon Generation, are an American um, operator, nuclear plant operator. They are the uh, largest nuclear, private nuclear operator in the world, um, and they have some of the highest avail availability factors for their nuclear power stations um, uh, anywhere in the world. So if you want to understand how to design a plant so it can be operated with maximum efficiency, it's really important to make sure you've got an operator in there with you. And what is it? It's, you know, we had lots of discussion this morning about what is an SMR, and, and it's absolutely correct that every SMR is different. So I just want to quickly explain what is our version of an SMR. Um, and they're not all the same, um, but what we have looked at is the eco economics of how you make nuclear power a realisable product, a commodity product that can be utilised in as many places and for as many applications in the world. Um, and we certainly are not about developing a small plant and delivering it in the way with all of the complex problems that you get with a large plant. So this is about completely changing the way that we deliver nuclear power. Um, so small for us is not about small physically, it's about small in terms of um, maximising the power output for the physical constraints that we put on the plant. So to get an economic solution, we need to make sure the plant can be built and can be delivered, and we need to make sure that we ma maximise the efficiency around the logistics and various other things to do with the plant. So we ensure that our plant can all be delivered to site is road transportable modules. The entire power station is modularised in our plant. We're not talking about just a nuclear reactor, we're talking about the complete power station. And the complete power station is modularised and modularised in a way that it means that it can be manufactured and transported to, size, to, to site. Um, and it's also about not designing around an arbitrary power level. So the power level that we have, 470 megawatts, is based on the maximum circumference that you can have for a pressure vessel and still transport that pressure vessel on a standard road in the UK or in the European Union or anywhere else. So our RPV vessel is 4.2 metres in diameter. You pack standard fuel into that that's available on the market today do the physics and you come out with a power rating of about 470. So it's all about maximising the power for the lowest cost of production. Modular, standardisation, repeatability, uh, factory produced product, we've talked about that this morning. This is the way to drive down cost out of nuclear. Avoidance of any large modules that need to be disassembled for transportation because then you have all the problems at site of actually assembling and retesting and various other things. Um, and then the modules need to be able to be tested in the factories 
before they're delivered to site to be able to make sure that you get that repeatability that you need in the standardization pro process. And then of course, it does include a reactor. It's a pressurized water reactor, standard traditional technology that is used in the majority of reactor plants around the world today, proven technology. We know it works, we know it can be licensed, so it's got low licensing risk around the world. Um, and also we know that the infrastructure is available to provide the fuel for it, but also to manage the waste for it. So this is not about advanced technology uh, because advanced technology is a cool thing to do. This is about providing nuclear in an economic solution that means that more industries and more customers can actually benefit from it. Okay, and the other important thing to talk about is why are we doing this now? We talked about this this morning as well. What we're trying to do, all of us, I think, collectively, is move away from the traditional model of nuclear down the risk curve so we deliver the nuclear product as a standardised product. And in our case, that means we'll deliver the complete power station as an engineered, manufactured and assembled contract. So Rolls-Royce SMR will own and manage the delivery of the complete power station. So we no longer need to develop a new supply chain for every plant that gets delivered. We no longer need to have an EPC contractor for every plant that gets delivered. That will all come as part of the turnkey contract under a single package, which means all of that risk that we see in traditional power plant construction, nuclear power plant construction, is managed by a single entity who has experience of doing this and replicating this <coughs> multiple times. And the reason we have to do that and the reason we can do that is because 90% of the plant is modularized into, dare I say it, Lego blocks. Um, and those, all of those Lego blocks are pre-designed, pre-tested, and then delivered from our factories to the site where we will assemble them in an assembly sequence. So it's a very different way of delivering nuclear, but it's based on our heritage of knowing how you design a plant and also knowing how you manufacture and then understanding what it needs to do to be to be able to operate it efficiently. Uh, I won't talk about this, but in effect, this is the Bible for our engineering team. This is how we design the product. We look at everything that needs to work to base, basically give the lowest cost of electricity or the lowest cost of hydrogen or whatever its systems it's being used for. So from day one in 2016, these are the design criteria our team have been working to. And, and again, it's all about um, delivering this through factories. So what does it look like? So this is the actual plant itself um, underneath what we call our fourth factory, the site factory, which is actually um, uh, produced by our partner BAM. Um, who've been working with us since the beginning of the project, BAM in the UK, but also globally, BAM will be supporting us in delivering the site factory. So because of our compact uh, site footprint, we can actually construct under a canopy, uh, so we avoid problems with the weather. And then you can see from this picture, the modularization starts to appear in terms of the different blocks that we have the whole power station broken down into. And again, a nice picture but I'm going to talk about where we are, where we are with our program. So, so we are currently in the UK licensing process, the generic design assessment process, um, which is incredibly useful because as part of that process, we can define any set of site conditions that we choose to use. So um, we can actually create a pretend site um, and actually say, well, we want to take the seismic conditions from the most extreme seismic place that we would ever want to put this plant. So we use conditions from there. We can take the temperature ranging from uh, a cold temperature from Finland to a warm temperature from the Middle East. We can, we can make up a site and then ask the British regulator, will our plant work and be safe and operable in those, those conditions? Uh, and that way we managed to come out of the generic design assessment with a, a licensed assessment of our plant that covers the vast majority of the locations that we would ever need or want to put the plant. Now, of course, we would need to go through uh, licensing in any country, absolutely in any country we went to, and also in any particular site we would have to go to and redo the licensing. That's quite understood. Um, but actually what, we, what it means we can do is we have already asked the British regulator to check that we will be fine in the majority of locations. So that gives us a good head start. So we're now in that process. Uh, step two is due to complete at the end of 2024, and then we will immediately start to move towards manufacturing of long lead components. 
Um, we're already working to build our supply chain for the complete power station, so that's already in train. We're shortlisting for our first factories. We're getting our system requirements, supplier requirements. And then most importantly, it was, as was discussed this morning, we're also looking at all of the logistics flow that's required. So we're actually looking at how are we going to transport these modules? What the, what's the flow of the modules that need to, to go to site? What's the construction sequence at site? And then using that information to reinform the design where we might need to change the design slightly to actually make sure that it's, it's optimized for the whole of the design process. So, so all that detailed planning work is underway for the construction as well as the uh, plant itself. And just some pictures as well, because they're more interesting to look at. So again, just some of the pre-production forgings that, that have been going on. These are now created and they're ready for us to start doing our testing on. Um, here's some pictures of the civil module facility. So we are going for pre-production prefabricated modules for the civils modules as well, and that's a facility that already exists. Um, we've got mock-ups of our modules um, at the moment that where we, we're using these to prove out the techniques for uh, construction and also for operation. And then these are just some pictures of some of the VR tools and the AR tools, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality, that we're using as part of the design phase to actually say, well, can I make sure that when I'm going through my construction that I've got enough space in the module that when I try and torque the bolts, for example, I've got space for the tools. When I'm going to do my um, operations and my services and maintenance through life, are we making sure that the right modules are in the right place for ease of access, for speed of maintenance? All of those things are being uh, thought through now, going through in, 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 and embedded into the design process. So all of that activity is, is fully underway. And then in terms of customers, again, I don't think I need to reiterate from the, this morning um, the, the volume of customers that we're all talking about that are out there for SMRs. Um, so again, we're incredibly pleased that in the Netherlands we've signed an agreement with our colleagues from ULC Energy, who are a development company, who are looking to... <laughs> look at, yes looking to deploy in the Netherlands. So that's, that's wonderful news because this is a great place uh, for SMRs to be deployed. Um, we're also obviously working in, in the UK and we're going through the process with the British government in terms of looking at the first sites for our SMRs to be deployed. Um, and, then, and then again, you can read in the press, uh, there's lots of discussions going on um, with other potential customers as well. So the market is vast, and I'm constantly amazed at the number of industrial com companies, especially, who are starting to come to us to say, actually, I think your solution of uh, nuclear power with the heat and the electricity that you can provide is exactly what we need for our industrial plant. So uh, great market out there. So I hope that was uh, eight minutes, <laughs> just about. <laughs> I don't penalize you. No, I know. <laughs>